Orchards has a very powerful feature that is actually also used by default everywhere, even if you don't know about it, called multi-tenancy. Multi-tenancy lets you run multiple websites, multiple completely independent Orchard websites from the same application. And those websites will have their own content, own configuration, own users, own everything, but they will run from the same application, use the same code base, potentially use the same modules and themes. But the users accessing those sites won't, need, they won't know anything about multiple websites running there behind the scenes. And uh, why this is very useful is because this allows you to have a very large site density. So if you are hosting uh, multiple Orchard applications for your clients, or when you are creating some kind of software as a service, this is very useful because you don't need to have separate applications. You, you can just pack all of your clients' websites onto the same single application, and well, that, that makes things a lot easier. That makes uh, development, deployment, hosting a lot easier, a lot cheaper as well, since uh, there is not uh, no overhead of all those separate applications. Uh, having just a tenant in that uh, same application is overall much, much cheaper than having separate applications. Now, of course, there are also downsides, and the downside is that, well, they are running from the same application. So even though um, the different sites, the different tenants can have different uh, modules and themes enabled uh, and use different features, in the end, it's the same code base that's behind of them. And uh, to an extent, uh, that shouldn't matter because you have those tenants in the same application because they are somewhat similar anyway. And also to an extent you can mitigate that, for example, with liquid markup. So if you want to, uh, want to change the, uh, something on the front end uh, or even the back end of, of one of the tenants, so you want to override uh, templates, you can also do that from liquid. So uh, there are a lot of options. It's, it's still a very flexible setup. Of course it has drawbacks, but for the use cases uh, that it is designed for, so a software as a, software as a service, it's, it's very, very efficient. So uh, let's have a quick demo on how it works. Now, for multi-tenancy, you will need to, of course, enable a feature. And the feature is called, and how you use multi-tenancy is, of course, by enabling a feature. So let's go to features and let's enable uh, the tenant management feature, which is called tenant. And now we have a tenants menu item here under settings. And as you can see, we already have a tenant, the default tenant. Then that's why I said that even if you don't notice, Orchard actually uses multi-tenancy. Um, the site um, or the tenant that you create uh, by default when you, when you start a new application is called the default tenant. So it will, it will run in its own scope even, even if there are no other tenants. Hence uh, why this feature is actually called tenants and not multi-tenancy because multi-tenancy is not the separate feature that's needed to be enabled, that's, that's given. Uh, but rather what you need to enable is just the tenant management screens. And if you want to host another Orchard website from this very same application, you can just go ahead and add the tenant. So let's do that. Let's call, call this tenant demo tenant, of course. Uh, well, we don't really need a description. And now we have to specify either a URL prefix or a host name or both. So somehow Orchard needs to, needs to be able to distinguish between the requests. So be able to know that, okay, this request is now coming, uh, is coming to, to tenant A or tenant B. Since we are running this application locally under local host, um, I, it, it would be very inconvenient to have to set up a separate uh, host for it. 
So I will just go with the URL prefix demo. But in a production scenario, very well, uh, you might use uh, just the host name. And when you first open such a newly created tenant, you will be greeted with the very same setup screen uh, that we have seen in the very beginning. There is one difference though. You can specify two options already. Well, first of all, the recipe to use. And for example, we can use uh, the other pretty complete recipe and theme, the agency theme, and also the database. So we are still on a, on a local machine. Let's use SQLite still and create. And of course, by default, this tenant is uninitialized. So uh, let me set it up. As you can see, the same, login, same uh, setup screen that we had before. Let's call it Timo. Again, we have to have an admin user or a, a super user which we will use the same credentials for because of course that's the secure thing. Uh, again, password, password one exclamation mark because that's another secure thing. And let's finish setup. Oh, do I just hit enter? And here it is. So as you can see, same application, different content and configuration. On the left hand side, we have the default tenant, right hand side, the default tenant. They look very different. Um, if I would be a user, I wouldn't be able to guess that it's the same application. Well, there is the telltale sign that both of them are localhost, but <laughs> if you are checking out uh, something on my localhost, you are not an ordinary user anyway. And similarly, you can also uh, access the admin area of this demo site. And as you can see, I'm not logged in here. And that is because, well, it's a different application. Uh, sorry, it's a different tenant. It's the same application. Um, yeah, but similar admin experience, but the configuration is still different. You see different menu items um, in, in the two cases. And if we check out the content items, well, those are also very different. So the content and config configuration between tenants is completely separate. From the admin UI, you have no option to somehow breach that boundary. Um, that is, of course, um, an important security feature. Uh, from code, though, if should you uh, somehow need it, from code, you can, you can uh, fetch data from other tenants, though. So it is possible to have tenants like this, but in your own code, uh, fetch, uh, for example, a specific content item that is somehow shared among tenants. Uh, and that is also very powerful. The all in all Orchard Core is a very suitable platform to build, uh, a soft, build software as a service products on. And that is actually that uh, multiple clients of ours are already doing.